Hey everyone, welcome back. So great to see you. This is such an exciting time to be alive because with the Unreal Engine 5 that just dropped, Lumen is one of the most highly anticipated features, one that I've been waiting for ever since UE5 was announced last year. So the topic of today's tutorial is going to be all about Lumen, everything you need to know about it, all its project settings, how to use it, and most importantly, all its limitations. So with that being said, let's get started. So just a disclaimer before we get started here, because this is an early access version of Unreal Engine 5, a lot of things are going to change. A lot of these new features are pretty much misunderstood at this point, you know, by pretty much everyone, myself included. Like, I'm reading through the Nanite documentation, and I have no idea what's happening. This is such new tech, I think it's going to take a while before it becomes the norm. So take this tutorial with a ginormous grain of salt. My main reason for making the tutorial today is mostly to help you guys with some of the issues that I ran into and how I solved them, okay? So don't take this tutorial as the holy gospel. If some of my tricks here help you out, awesome. If not, that's fine, because this is not meant to be a full-fledged, you know, very well-documented, very well-researched tutorial. It's just too early at this point. So with that being said, now we can get started. Okay, so now that we're in Unreal, the first thing we want to do to make sure that, you know, Lumen is up and running in your scene or in your project is we're going to need to go to the project settings. So up, up in the top right-hand corner here, click on settings and open project settings. Let's just get through the boring part first. Now, you'll see on the left-hand side here, scroll down and there should be a rendering tab right here. Make sure you click on that and then scroll down until you see... Global Illumination, Reflections, and Lumen. The current settings right here that I have right now are the recommended settings for UE5. So now that the boring part's out of the way, let's close this. So as you can see right here, the only thing I have in my scene is a skylight and a directional light. So I'm gonna go check out my lights here. You'll see I have both skylight and directional light. If I hide these, everything goes dark. So if I enable only the directional light, you know, already we're seeing really nice indirect lighting in here. And if I enable the skylight on top of that, we're going to get just a little bit more bounce coming from the sky. Now, there's several different ways of controlling the indirect lighting here. So the easiest way to get full control over your indirect lighting is to select your main light here. So in this case, the directional light. And in the details panel, we're going to search for indirect. And you'll see right here we have indirect lighting intensity. If I set this to 10, you'll see, obviously... Our GI is blown way out of proportion, but you get this just gives you an idea of how you have full control over it. So if I want to turn it off entirely, I can set it down to zero, and you'll see we have no more GIs. So I'm going to set it back up to one, just so you guys know this is one of the ways you can control it. Now, the next way we can control this with Lumen is to go into your post-process volume, select this, and once again, in the details panel, we're going to search for Lumen. And we have a few other controls here. And what's nice is that now you can finally choose which type of GI you want. We've got screen space, you got ray tracing. I'm going to leave it Lumen for now, but this is finally where you can control it. You don't need to enable it with console commands anymore. And that's awesome. Now, Lumen also takes care of reflection. So not just the indirect lighting, but also reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a sphere here. And drag this up, make it a little bit bigger. And slap on a chrome material. And now you'll see we have reflections on our sphere. But you'll notice things are kind of blurry and they pop a little, you know, depending on how far you are from the from the object. Now, the way I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but Lumen uses HLODs for reflections in this case. So obviously, I think you're going to get better results with ray trace reflections. So, you know, just kind of, you can play around with the settings here. Now that we I've shown you how to change that in the project settings, Feel free to experiment a little bit. I just kind of want to point you in the right direction and tell you guys about the various settings and why things behave a certain way. So, again, go experiment with the ray tracing reflections as opposed to the lumen reflections. But in most use cases, I think this is going to be plenty fine unless you have really you really need those clean, sharp reflections on shiny objects, for example. So what I'm about to show you right here is quite possibly the most exciting part 
of the entire Unreal Engine 5 revealed. This blew my mind during the live stream the other day. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again for all of you who didn't watch the stream. I'm going to go ahead and create a sphere here. And on this sphere, I'm going to slap on an emissive material. Now notice just by having an emissive material on the sphere, the sphere is now a light. It's actually casting and emitting not only direct light, but indirect lighting as well. So if I scale this up way bigger, notice how this sphere is illuminating this entire area. The fact that this works out of the box, this is the coolest thing about Lumen, in my opinion. Yes, the GI that we get from other tools is great, but man, I did not expect emissive materials to emit light, and not only light, but indirect light. So I apologize for acting like a five-year-old on Christmas. This is just really exciting to me. So with that being said, let's move on to the next point. <laughs> So I think most people understand how Lumen works in theory. It works pretty darn well out of the box. That's pretty straightforward. That whole process of indirect lighting is very straightforward once you know how to control it and how to enable it in your project. But I think where people run into issues with Lumen is with things that are kind of unrelated to Lumen. And one of those things is Nanite. So I think Nanite is pretty new tech. I don't think many people really understand what it's doing. I'm not one of those people who knows what it's doing. So I'm going to help troubleshoot some issues that, you know, I ran into playing around with Nanite and Lumen. And you'll see right here that we have two trees. And now one of them looks substantially better than the other. So let's pay attention to the right-hand tree here. And let's zoom in close. And now all our shadows are here in our mesh. And as soon as we zoom out, you'll see the shadows just disappear. And then when you get further enough away, all the leaves just disappear. Everything just, same thing with our tree. Our tree is just kind of falling apart as we move further away. But the other one is fine. Why is that? The only difference between these trees is that the right-hand tree right here is nanite. And the left-hand tree here is just a regular static mesh with no nanite being used. So... Lumen works very well with the static mesh here. We got some nice shadows going on in here. Um, some nice highlights happening on the leaves themselves. But the nanite tree just looks really bad. And obviously, I use this as an example because Epic has clearly stated that nanite and Lumen don't work so well with very thin meshes because everything is kind of mesh distance field based. So because of that, having thin, very thin plane models, it's not going to work super well. There's a reason why there's little to no foliage in the Unreal Engine 5 demo so far. This is exactly why, okay? I'm not saying you can't get good results with foliage. You can. That being said, if you're running into issues with your lighting and your models are just not looking very good, try making sure that they're not converted to nanite. Import them as a regular static mesh, all right? Importing as a regular static mesh could be a, a very simple way of troubleshooting what's causing your issues in your scene. Now, the next issue that I've had and I've seen other people struggle with is the shadows. Now, you'll see that I've placed a rect light right next to the table and the chairs here, and you'll notice, hopefully you can see in the video, but these shadows are incredibly noisy. They don't look very good, and the shadows are a little too sharp for, you know, considering the size of this light. Ray trace shadows looked better in 4.26 as opposed to the lumen shadows. So how do we fix this? And of course, in true Unreal Engine fashion, the solution to this is, you guessed it, a console command. I'm really annoyed by this. I really wish that, you know, Epic would do away with these solutions that are solved with console commands. I just want to have a slider or a check box something in, in the light instead of having to deal with a million console commands in the project, right? So the first of which, so paying attention to the shadows here. Now the first console command we're going to use, so going at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen here, it's great because now the console command is, menu is always there. And I'm going to type in the following, r.shadow.virtual.smrt.raycountlocal. I'm going to bump this up to something like eight. And now hopefully you guys can see that the difference there our shadows are suddenly way less noisy, okay? And then there's another console command that we can enable to help with the softness of these shadows. And that is the following, smrt.samples per ray local eight. And then you notice that the shadows got a little bit softer. They're still not great. Like the, this just looks really weird. We got this kind of this, we clearly got some soft shadows happening, but we also have this weird hard shadow happening, okay? So this this seems to be a limitation of Lumen. 
I think it's, again, this is a work in progress. There's still a lot of unknown. So my understanding is that this is a, somewhat of a limitation of the virtual shadow map that Lumen uses. And the solution to that is either to back up a little bit more or use a slightly smaller light. So notice how if I make this smaller, the it, it does feel a little bit better. But again, this is not a real solution. Now, I'm not a rendering engineer, so I don't actually know what's happening under the hood here. I just wanted to show you guys these two console commands, which are found in the Epic documentation. I will include these console commands and the link to the documentation in the description below. So go check that out. Do read the documentation. There's a lot to unpack here. I just wanted to troubleshoot some issue that I ran into myself. So the last issue that we're going to talk about right now, and this is something that you may or may not run into. This is something an issue that I ran into this morning, and hopefully this helps someone out. So we're going to go ahead and create a light up here and create a directional light. And I get this light shining in here. Like that. Now you may be, not be wondering, okay, I need to increase my ind indirect lighting, right? To get some of that sweet, sweet bounce happening. But you'll notice I'm not getting any bounce whatsoever. No bounce at all. Why is this? Now, the reason I could, you know, try bumping up my intensity, perhaps, right? And this is more of like a, a screen space GI. This is not the true lumen that we've grown accustomed to seeing in the exterior level. And the reason why I'm not getting any proper indirect lighting in my apartment scene here is because of this HDRI dome here, okay? I have a, like a, a dome texture. This is from an Evermotion package. And so I have a dome out here and it's, does, it's not casting shadows, no shadows are cast, but even though there's no shadows being cast, it's, effect, it's blocking the light, even though the light is shining in my scene. So if I go ahead and I delete this, suddenly notice how, boom, my apartment scene is flooded with light. All that GI works now, and everything works as expected. So I'm going to turn down my indirect lighting. Again, because it's obviously way too strong, but now we've got some some good proper GI now. That's the reason. So Lumen uses some kind of ray tracing under the hood, even though the light was shining through the window just fine. It wasn't the GI aspect of Lumen was not able to reach the inside of my apartment scene because of that HDRI dome. So it's important to keep that in mind. This is one of the things I I just kind of had to fiddle around with and discovered by accident. So. Hopefully, I'm not the only one who ran into this issue. Hopefully, this helps you out, or some of you out, at least. And so, guys, that concludes this tutorial. This was very much a crash course. This is not intended to be a full-fledged Lumen tutorial. This is still early access. Things are going to change, but I figured I'd help you guys kind of figure out what some issues I ran into are and what those solutions to those issues can be. With that being said, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.